Are we running a competition or something? We are running a competition. A little yeah. competition? Yeah. So before yeah. we get properly into the show, we should probably mention a competition. It's a competition for some lovely things which you can see on the screen right now, perhaps. Maybe wow. all of these things. We've created a lovely little visual asset for you to look at while we talk about it. What's this way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna do it <laughs> now look we've got lots of things for you to win we've got things like calendars that are signed by us we've got a lovely card written by us we've got martian soil we've got taste changing tablets mm. we've got a very exclusive Sci guys top you can win a whole bunch of stuff if you want to know the full details of the competition you can check out the link in the description but all you need to know right now is to enter the competition all you need to do is subscribe to us you need to uh, like this episode mm. and you need to leave a comment and the comment needs to be an answer to this question the question is since we're talking about today climaxes i thought about imaxes mm. and what is the first film that you ever saw what do you think the first film you ever saw is let us know in the comments below and uh and you can enter to win the competition there you go climax imax no that was There's a tenuous a, link that was so tenuous <laughs> think of something better <laughs> think of something nope. better I cannot. There is right. no, no question greater than this question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I also, when you said an exclusive Psy Guys top, I was like, but Corey, you're the exclusive Psy Guys top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not you, Jeff. I'm no. an exclusive top. <laughs> Definitely not you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what are we starting with this week? Are we review Spotify followers? Spotify? You're both wrong. Uh, We're both wrong. Uh, YouTube this comment. No, of the month. The last, the, the other one. Uh, Apple Podcasts of the month. Okay, no, the other one. That's what we reviewed. Patreon. I said that. <laughs> well done, Luke. Finally. <laughs> yeah, <got it. laughs> first time. We just want to thank our patrons who voted for the topic of this episode. You can become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash sci guys. We have a patron. We do. Patreon.com forward slash side guys. Patreon.com forward slash side guys. That's right. Patreon.com forward slash side guys. Let's start the show. <laughs> Let's start the show. Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jamp, and Luke Cutforth, and this week's special guest, Noah Fins. Yay! Oh, hello there. This week, we finally come to the topic of coming. <laughs> what? Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Dirty patrons. <laughs> Dirty this what they've, this they what they for voted this. for. They voted for. So it was a tie. It was the <laughs> science of orgasms or the science of PTSD. And I thought one of them seemed a little bit dark. So I went with orgasms instead. Did someone just oh. like submit like, come please. <laughs> please, <laughs> please just come. Signs of come. <laughs> Signs of come. come. Maybe, maybe uh, for this week's, this month's bonus episode, which you can get on patreon.com forward slash sci guys, a bonus episode about come. It'll just be called come. The science of come. <laughs> come slash. No, but I thought bonus. that we could uh, bang this one out uh, pretty quickly. So I thought we'd, I thought we'd do the science of orgasms. So why don't we dive right in? Shall we? <laughs> no. Let's dive straight into the cum. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is the thing. To anyone who's a new listener, we do often talk about science topics, and yeah. we're not I usually this childish. Last I thought week you were we going to say, about, right off we the do bat. talk about cum. <laughs> <laughs> last week we talked about going to Mars. <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking about cum. I mean, our 100th episode was, was just last week. It's 101. You know, we reached the climax, and now we're finally coming. <laughs> I don't like puns. I don't like when How you many make of these puns. have you got, Curry? <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, look, I've got a few, but it takes me a little bit uh, between each one to get back to. Anyway. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. I wish you invited me onto a different episode. <laughs> Why couldn't I be here for Mars? I gave you the option to not join. I told you what this would be, and you still came he anyway. Messaged me this morning. He was like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah. How bad can it be?" <laughs> okay. No. Let's let's go straight ahead. Let's dive right into it. Take the bull by the horns. Um, what are orgasms? Now, Jamp, I know you've never had one, but just imagine. Um, what do you guys think they well, are? Well, I've read some theory. Um, <laughs> apparently, towards the end of coitus, you um, you have some spasms and... <laughs> spasms? Baby, baby making time. Yeah, or spasms, right? Or, or spasms. Sp <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Or, or spasms? Or spasm. Yeah, it's kind of like a spasm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But from within. <laughs> Luke, do you have any idea? Do you want to add to Jamp's wonderful, um, no, wonderful I don't, explanation? 
There's literally nothing to add there, I think. We can wrap the <laughs> okay. show up, I think. Oh, Thank well, you for listening. Uh, we'll see you next uh, well, week. Trust Luke to finish early. Anyway, um... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm full of them. I'm, I'm full of them. No. So, uh, the definition of orgasm I've taken from Britannica. Also, by the way, before, before anyone gets too mad, blame mm. our patrons. This was not my choice. I didn't choose to do this topic. Our patrons did. They suggested it so, and then voted on it. Exactly. So if you think that this is this is childish, if you think that we shouldn't be doing this, blame the patrons. And if you want us to never do something like this again, go to patreon.com <laughs> for us last side, guys. Silly and you little can stop Pete. us. Suggest something better. So this is this is the definition from uh, Britannica. So orgasm, also called climax, climactic psych- uh, psychological, st- uh, physiological state of heightened sexual excitement and gratification mm. that is followed by a relaxation of sexual tensions and the body's muscles. Essentially, um, it's that bit at the end of sex, uh, not necessarily at the end of sex, but usually at the end of sex, where you mm. feel all good and start relaxing. It is like the big goal of sex, isn't it? Well, you know what? No. No. Baby is goal and make love secondary. Well, you don't go for a baby every time. Come is not important. You don't, you don't go for a baby every time, do you? Usually no. you go for an orgasm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> this has got really weird. You probably want both, I guess, if you're looking for a baby. You know? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. If. Yeah, if. yeah. I did if like that Noah said within about 10 seconds of each other, baby is the goal, come is not important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if baby is the goal... I didn't think about that. <laughs> Very good. Very receptive. To anyone who doesn't understand, come make baby. We did an episode on it. But you don't actually have to, you don't have to orgasm to get someone pregnant. You cut, yeah, that sometimes the pre-cum is enough. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Sometimes mm. the pre-cum is enough. But also yeah. you don't necessarily need to orgasm to ejaculate. Some people can ejaculate without orgasm. What? Some people can orgasm. What? Just like dribble, without eja- uh, dribble out. Like, it's like a gun trigger. shooting without you pulling the trigger. Well, you could throw a bullet at someone real fast, can't <laughs> wow. Yeah, surely you'd, you'd be just... like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> you take out the bullet and you throw it. Uh, <laughs> like, boom. Chucking bullet. No, you're just holding the gun and the bullet falls out. <laughs> 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 like, oh, they dribble, you know, they pump out. There's like, one falls oh, out and then another falls out. <laughs> 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 it's like a shotgun, okay. you know? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, so... Oh, dear. No, um... Sorry, everyone. No, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, orgasm doesn't need to be the goal of sex. Um, and, you know, if uh, go look at You're someone so right. that does sex education, because that's goal not what of I'm sex. here for. The goal of sex is just to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, unless you're looking for a baby, in which case... That's your goal. That's not a good time. That's a very bad time. It's very stressful. We heard yeah. how much breastfeeding hurts. That would hurt. Do you know how much breastfeeding hurts? I said, have you heard? Oh, have I heard? I have never breastfed. I, well, I, I'd assume not. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, during orgasm, um, do you know what happens? Well, come on, guys. Let's be, let's be adult Okay, so this. some muscles go like, they kind of wobble and spasm, mm, like Jem said. Wobble. Um, and you. there's a release of hormones uh, in the brain. I, I don't know which ones. Maybe neuropinephrine. Come. Um, and that's the cuddly one, isn't it? Um, and one. and yeah, and and you feel all nice. You feel like that was a, that was worth it. Mm. That was that was a good time. <laughs> what, I'm gonna do that again one day. What if you feel not so nice? Well, then, that's then that's, normal. the science yeah. behind the ick that, <laughs> that oh, you the get. Ick. Oh yeah, I what? saw a TikTok oh. about this recently about like um, what's it called? It's called like. Uh, I think the the term that people use online is like post nut clarity. That's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Which yeah. is like this idea that um, well the the idea goes that uh, typically men will find uh, their partner um, less attractive post orgasm, and no. you, and the, I've read about there's like a something to do with like a, a kind of repulsion, um, like an instinct towards repulsion unless there's some kind of like um, you know bond like you you care about the person. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I I don't I don't get that. I just want to cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> when I said ick, I meant like, oh, why did I do that? Not, oh my god, you're so much uglier than you were ten <laughs> seconds ago. You guys are you guys are kind of talking about two different, but yeah, um, semi related, potentially things. related things. Yeah. Um, right, look, you, you seem to be talking about sex with another person. Um, right. Noah, I assume you're talking about masturbating to porn. No, what? No, no, I'm just saying in general. <laughs> right. Okay. Afterwards, you're a bit like, oh, that was a bit much. Like, oh, oh, right. Like, yeah. oh, right. So discussed with like sex right. and not the, the sexual partner. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, you guys are talking about similar but different things. I think um, what, this, what this might come down to, 
Uh, one potential reason for that is that um, everyone is ugly as no. Uh, the the actual reason for it, it could be um, that uh, during uh, orgasm you your inhibitions are a little bit lowered. You know, you're the kind of the part of your brain. Um, so the part of your brain that kind of handles, um, I guess, what is what is the word? Um, Sexy thoughts. Yeah. The, well, the part of your brain. No, no. I no, wish no, you no. didn't whisper that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a part of your brain called the lateral uh, orbitofrontal cortex um, like, is less active mm. um, when you're having sex. <laughs> and then during uh, and that that's the part of your brain that you use for sort of decision making and reasoning that's where ah, that's where all that comes from yeah so yeah oh dear. <laughs> yeah so um so you that kind of that because that part of your brain is kind of like not switched off but definitely like working less hard mm -hmm. during sex and uh when, when you finally orgasm um it's very few decisions just afterwards to make. when it switches back on and it like you know you're able to make good judgments again it's <laughs> like whoa bro oh, i no. went out for five minutes and you did this <laughs> <laughs> took my break yeah but also there's <laughs> there's a <laughs> Oh, quick! The lateral orbitofrontal cortex is out on its break. Is We've only got five mouth? minutes to do this. Let's go. This is such a nerdy conversation. If I ever overheard this, I'd be like, "Oh my god!" See, I think the issue with this podcast <laughs> is that um, it's too it's too nerdy for normies, but it's too silly for nerds. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's our tagline. <laughs> I'm gonna change our Twitter bio to that. <laughs> Like we've hit this, we've hit this perfect middle ground where people are like, "This isn't scientific enough." They're, you're making silly <laughs> jokes about willies and sex. Oh, I do wish they'd stop <laughs> making jokes and get back to the serious yeah, stuff. Like, <laughs> like some people are like, "Oh, you make too many jokes," and other people are like, "You don't make enough jokes." <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> like, um, that wasn't an order, by the way. Come on, whoever you want. <laughs> um, no, back to back to this. Honestly, back to this. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, one of the reasons that you could feel um, a little more discerning post orgasm mm. is that during sex, that uh, specific part of your brain that handles reasoning is less active. So there's also there also could be um, a factor of shame um, along with it because you know in society sex is bad unless mm. you're married and masturbation will make your hand grow hair and you go blind. But um, what? No, it would look that's not truth. That's not that's not a fact. I'm just that's no, what no, people I say. mean, is that what people say? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what people say. Yeah, it's a, your hand it's, grow hair and your what you go, go blind. blind? Yeah, yeah. it's a, probably a more American thing, I assume, but um, it's definitely something that people say. They're always coming up with something, yeah, you know, like <laughs> this no. is why science is important because you can literally just test that and then and then be like, okay, that doesn't happen. I mean, cool. I don't think you need to test. I don't even think you need science to test whether, you know, Jack sure, is going to make mean, your hand grow hairy. Theoretically, if loads of people believed that and you needed to check, you could just test it and then you would know. No, true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> Although you would expect to see that there are probably more people with hair on their hands, you know? I was just thinking if you wanted like a fuller beard or something, just put the cum on your face. No, it's not the semen. It it's the... It's the act. Oh, it's the act itself. Yeah. That yeah. makes you hair. Yeah. You need yeah, minoxidil. <laughs> well, I was Satan <laughs> visits you in the night and makes you grow hair on your hands. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm thinking of horrible things in my head. Stop that, then. <laughs> no, so... <laughs> Some well, Curry, you'd be a great magic. therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling sad? You feel... <laughs> stop stop that, it, then. mate. Have you drop tried your it. brain? You tried not. <laughs> Just drop it, bro. That'll be 300 points. Drink some water. <laughs> And that's what therapy is. Um, no, so yeah. The, again, the sort of culture of shame around um, sex and whatnot that could also lead to you feeling um, bad after um, you know coming doing it. Yeah, after doing the deed. So during <laughs> orgasm, your heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing all suddenly shoot up. Um, your pelvic muscle spasms um, that causes the urethra in males to. Um, to contract and the vagina to also contract um uh, and that's how males ejaculate because the urethra is like it's been squeeze squoze oh it's your pee hole. hole the pee hole the, pee the hole. urethra pee hole. goes isn't just the pee hole it's the tube no i know but the pee <gasps> hole spasms i thought it was like the muscles around that no it's the it's so your pee hole spasms? No, to be fair, the... yeah i would have thought it was like further down no it yeah. is further down the urethra is the tube but not the pee hole it's not What's the entire the urethra. What's the what scientific saying? word for pee hole? I don't know the scientific urethra. word. The mouth of the urethra. Urethra. It's like it's a river. 
Okay, right. If, okay, okay. Let's put Eureka. It, let's put it this way. No. <laughs> right. Let's put it this way. If I was to say your throat spasms, you wouldn't say mamba ma. My lips are spasming. You know. <laughs> it, I, I'm talking about your ah. Uh, so your <laughs> penis lips don't spasm. Okay. No, your penis lips. You've got spasm. penis lips. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. Every I want to see. Lips, <laughs> if they I've did. seen a penis. Okay, jump. Several. Oh, Show through. him, come please. Can what? I see your penis lips, please? I don't have, no, I got. <laughs> please. I got fella. <laughs> oh my god, penis! I'm just imagining when you're going like, ma, like. Oh my god. Right. <laughs> when I say your urethra spasms, remember it's your it's well it, no your urethra doesn't spasm. So, Jesus, your pelvic muscle spasms, right? Do you know where your pelvis is? The um, big bone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so d down down at the base, that spasms. The muscle down there spasms, which contracts the urethra. Bear in mind, the urethra is very long um, <laughs> and goes down the entire length of the penis. It's not just the, mm -hmm. it's not just the, the exit and hole. And further. It's the entire, yeah, and, and further, mm. yeah. It's the entire... <laughs> <laughs> so you see <laughs> the, the nodding and smiling <laughs> as though it was something very profound. And further. Um, yeah, so the... the the urethra goes like right the way down and um, the pelvic muscle spasms, which squeezes it essentially, causes it to contract. And mm. that means that all the seminal fluid, um, the, the semen um, that is <laughs> that is that is sitting there at the sort of base is squoze out. Squeeze, is it, squeezed, is it, does it, is it Does it all go? Well, or is there a bit left over? I mean, I Come. think there's, there's supposed to be a bit left over, isn't there? Yeah. Let's just say there's a bit left over. Mm. All right. I can't imagine. Well, it's like getting ketchup out of a bottle, you know? You don't get all. I've heard that's why, because quite often. It's just pour some water down and after like sex. shake it around and get the rest of it out. <laughs> I've heard that's why quite often after sex you need to pee to get that, those last little bits out. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Very <laughs> that good. sperm must be so disappointed. But I don't know if that's true. I should say, I don't know if that's true. That's what I've heard. Well, you can't pee and ejaculate at the same time. I know that. Yeah. Isn't it because the, either the urethra or the tube. That goes into the urethra that carries the semen is like wrapped around the other one. I'm not sure if it's wrapped. I know that, but basically I know that they're both, they're both coming out the same hole. So it's, it's mm -hmm. so that you can only have one at the same time. Like you can't breathe and swallow at the same time. I'll prove you sure. wrong. <laughs> right. Okay, guys, come on. Come on, let's be good. My cloaca. So the muscles, uh, the, so there's, there's muscles in the, the vagina penis that, um, and the, and the anus all contract um, about once per second, five to eight times, and that'll be why. Like, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen semen come out of a penis, um, uh, I don't like using those words. If you ever see a dick come, oh gosh, I can't use those words somehow. on YouTube. Um, if you've you ever seen a willy wee, if you've ever seen a man's meat shaft <laughs> oh, um, yeah. expel drool, yeah, dribble, dribble. yeah, um, baby batter, it comes out in don't pump. say <laughs> baby, baby batter. batter. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of something, baby. Uh, yeah, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen a man's <laughs> meat shaft um, expel baby batter, oh, um, oh, um, no. you you know it, it comes out in pumps. <laughs> there you go. That's that's that. So yeah. people, this is this is this is. Um, so I got a lot of this information, by the way, um, from uh, Planned Parenthood. Which is really great. You should go check mm. out uh, the Planned Parenthood website if you're looking for sex education because you're not getting it here. Shout out to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> yes, yeah, shout out, Yo, bro. <laughs> they've been struggling. They need they need some support. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're ever confused about any of this stuff, Planned Parenthood has very good explanations help, help for you. fellow influencers. <laughs> So if you have a clitoris, you're usually like you mm. usually orgasm through stimulation of that um, or your vagina or anus. And if you have a penis, then usually you can orgasm through stimulation of yeah through the anus through the anus. Wow. Wait, so you said every every time someone comes, is their butt always squeezy? Squeeze, squeeze, yeah, o all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess sure. I mean, unless you're paralyzed in your butt, I yeah. I never thought about that. <laughs> wow, I am learning. Mm. <laughs> Well, next time we all come, let's just all think about our bums. I know okay. because then I'll no. Pay attention. Uh, no. Everybody, everybody, Redirect. stop! <laughs> stop! 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 Feel the squeeze. There you go. <laughs> um, no. So, dear, dear gosh, I didn't think this would be so hard to get through, but here we are, yeah. barely through the first paragraph. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you can you can basically achieve orgasm through stimulation of the clitoris, vagina, anus, uh, penis, or testicles. Um, 
Some people can do it on their nipples. Yep. That's, Stop. That's right. You're yeah. right. Isn't that crazy? What? Well, nipples. Some people can, can orgasm from, from nipple stimulation. Yeah, some people can orgasm just from thinking sexy, th thinking some, you know, about sex. Can I ask a question about the anus? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Go ahead. Go Luke, ahead. You may ask a question about the anus. Yes, please. So I have, <laughs> I heard that uh, female orgasm happening from the anus isn't happening from the anus. It's happening from the vagina through the wall. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, mm. okay. So here's what I'm going to say is that that is probably most likely the case. Um, but people can achieve stimulation from like sort of different places. So for example, if someone has been um, paralyzed from say the neck down, they can, their brain can remap yes. so that they can achieve orgasm through um, other means yes. or like let's say what? you listen sorry let's say you're paralyzed from the waist down you uh, apparently your brain can sort of remap itself so that you could achieve orgasm through like someone stroking your arms in the right way there's 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 i seen i was watching a movie not a porn movie in french class with my <laughs> french class when i was i don't know why we we're watching it we we're watching a french movie and there was a guy who was paralyzed from the neck down and he could orgasm through someone rubbing his ears Stop. I don't know why we That's were watching amazing. that in French. The Dumbo. Is it Dumbo? Don't do that. Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> that felt dirty. <laughs> audio listeners. Uh, Corey just fondled Jemp's earlobe. I don't want them to know that. Oh, don't tell them. Come all over the desk. <laughs> oh, I I'm hate sorry. This. I, I left that there from last time. Yeah, so Luke, uh, to answer your question, I don't know. Both, maybe. Okay. No, like it could be both. It depends on the person, but yeah, I think probably most likely it'd be stimulated through through the wall. It's like when your next door neighbor's having a party. I was the, say the music's it. so loud. The music's so loud you can just dance to it next door, and you're like, still as good. I can have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, like I said before, that the part of your brain that handles um like logical thinking and whatnot mm -hmm. that's that basically goes in a little holiday while you're you know Out doing window. the deed um uh and then so there's lots of different parts of your brain that are involved in having your having an orgasm like we've we've the number of times that we have done brain scans on people that are <laughs> orgasming there's many it's many brain scans been done on it the thing is though apparently that it's difficult to do it um for most men or cis men because like their orgasms are really short <laughs> yeah so like <laughs> studying that it's like oh that we missed uh, it hold up so lots of um orgasms so lots of hormones are released during orgasm can you guys uh hazard a guess at maybe uh just one hazard a guess at just one that might um be released oxytocin right very good i keep on wanting you to say thief i keep on wanting to say oxycontin which is um drug a drug huh. yeah. not the same no. thing <laughs> not the same thing no oxytocin is released during orgasm do you know uh, what else it might be released during Dope. I mean, oh, wait, no, uh, through cuddling with your baby when after it's born. Yeah. So like during breastfeeding. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess also cuddling as well. Um, having a, having a good kiss get, get, gives you some, <laughs> gives you some oxytocin. <laughs> I forgot having my good I forgot my question. <laughs> having a good kiss. Just like, having a good kiss. Having a good very kiss. Australian mm. accent. Having a good kiss, man. Um, no, so it's really it's really really stirring orgasming and breastfeeding. Um, <laughs> it's released. Um, it's secreted by your pituitary gland, um, and then released in the hypothalamus. Um, and it it yeah it. Like Luke said, it's the sort of huggy hormone. It's, it's what makes you feel yeah, close known to as people. It's the cuddle hormone, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's what makes you feel like, <laughs> it makes you feel sort of like lovey dovey with other people. Not like lovey, like, oh, I want to get some of that. More lovey, like, oh, like I want hug. to cuddle. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I was like, I don't like that that's the same hormone released while breastfeeding. Imagine if you had an orgasm and then an, it, 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 immediately after your brain released something that went, now we're going to have sex again <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That'd be exhausting. You'd I just be in that more. forever. You'd just be in a constant loop forever for, until you died. I mean, that is that is please beneficial, stop releasing Your body's like this Oliver bloody Christ hormone. <laughs> What's in more, please? There is an animal that actually has sex until it dies. I think it's a shrew, um, some what? kind of shrew oh, or big up shrews. <laughs> um, shrew. Not an elephant oh. shrew. It's some. It's some Shout kind of shrew Shout or like um shrew. small, like rodent-like animal that um that fin. The, <laughs> I was about to say no offense as well. <laughs> the, the males during when they, when they like during their sort of sexual period, mm. um, they reach sexual maturity and then um, they have sex 
for like two weeks until they literally die from exhaustion. I can't remember exactly. I see that's the males. Yeah, no, the, yeah, the males do. Well, no, because yeah. if the females did it, they'd be like. <laughs> well, exactly. There would be no more shrews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless no, the they... shrews take like only a week to make, in which case you could pop a few out on your way to death. <laughs> <laughs> but who's looking after the shrews? You know, yeah. um, no. But the, the, yeah, the males. Uh, so the males have sex until they die, which is pretty cool. Um, and in some insects, obviously, they have sex and then then they I was, die. I was thinking like the, the mm. male prey mantises usually die, but that's because the females rip their heads off or something. Yeah, I think mm. it's a bit different. Black widows do that yeah. as well. L- lots yeah, of they get eaten. Um, quite, got and th- some insects have got. Um, some insects, I think slugs or snails, snails, I think. I've got, I know too much about animal sex mm-hmm. and I have. I really have no reason to know it. I was watching some <laughs> snails. Do snails have sex with their sticky side? And I was thinking their antenna. Do they things. go like, and then those are their eyes? Shells are yeah. like for, one, for one thing, Jack. They could rub their eyes together. Um, no, well, that's not, a, that's not for sex. Oh. Um, so, yeah, so the way that snails are really interesting because I think they're hermaphroditic, so they can be both uh, male and female at the same time. Um, That's and, so cool. But they've also got, I think, I'm pretty sure it's snails. They've got something called like a love dart or like the dart of love or whatever <gasps> that, um, to increase chances of, um, so impregnation sort of thing, or like uh, I- increased chances of fertilization, rather. Um, they shoot out this sort of dart, but it could also kill them. Oh. I yeah. think I've seen I this. Do- <laughs> I'm in a snail group on Facebook. You're in a, <laughs> you're in a snail group. Yeah. In anticipation of this, Corey, I just Googled how do snails have sex? And Google has this description of how snails have sex. And then the end of the description is, that's assuming that the snail survives the little love stab. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the dart you're talking about. Yeah. But the little love stab. <laughs> yeah, so um, what, what other uh, hormone is released during sex? Don't answer that. I'll answer it for you. It's dopamine. Dopamine. That's the one. I yeah. knew that. Okay, good. I was That's trying to, to convince say it. you to do it again. I assume. Um, no. So <laughs> dopamine. Do you guys know what dopamine is for? Generally, what or what like people think it's uh, for? Happiness. It's the do that again drug, isn't it? Well, it's the yeah. So it's the it's a it's a chemical that makes you feel good. It's a, mm. it's a good feeling chemical. Mm. Um, so I uh, thought it wasn't. Well, it is. It's and it the isn't. one that get that motivates you towards good feelings. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the it's called like the the pleasure chemical. Yeah, yeah. I just mm. mean that I think. I might be incorrect about this, but I think that that's generally a misconception that dopamine is the is actually the pleasure. Dopamine is what motivates you towards pleasure, and then the actual pleasure pleasure hormone is a different hormone. No, so Luke, you're right. So in popular culture, dopamine is kind of seen as the the pleasure chemical, the happy, good feeling chemical, which, to an extent, it is in that it doesn't necessarily um, give you the good feeling, but it's the it's the sort of motivation for the good feeling. Mm. If that makes sense, it's the it's. How mm. how you described it was it was pretty spot on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we we know that uh, oxytocin and um, dopamine, oxytocin, yeah, the oxytocin and dopamine are released uh, during orgasm as well. Um, also, prolactin is released during orgasm, um, and that that's what gives you that feeling of that good, like sort of like yeah, yeah, oh, satisfaction. You know, mm. it's like oh yeah, that's that's a. Mm. Uh, that's a that's a very no not even Borat not doing Borat it's very nice, very nice. Uh, Borat's, <laughs> Borat's back though Borat's back so yeah. it's okay um, yeah so prolactin is gives you that sort of uh, good feeling the satisfaction um, and um, yeah it's I think it's also released um, I think it's also released during uh, breastfeeding prolactin as well I was gonna say the lact just makes me think of lactation as it. It must have something to do with breastfeeding. It could do. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where I don't know the actual etymology of the word prolactin, but um, prolactin meaning pro, like as in good or more. Um, lactin coming from lactate. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Could it could mean that? Mm. But I I haven't looked it up, so you know I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's lots, lots of different hormones um, and um, sort of neurotransmitters released during uh, orgasm. So during orgasm, lots of other things happen. Obviously, it's quite similar to taking drugs, but um, you can also uh, feel less pain during Ooh. orgasm. Yeah, so if you're, if, you're, if you're feeling a bit ouchy, just mm. beat one out. Yeah, I used to have really bad period pain when I was younger, and I'd be like Googling, like, how do I make it stop? And was, a bunch of threads, a bunch of women were just like, just have a little, just have a little wank. Just have a little wank. Like, that's literally on the list of, like, how to stop period pain. So if, it, if you have like a headache or something, you just like um, say no to paracetamol. Prescribe myself a wank. <laughs> the doctor yeah, exactly. writes it down. You must nut at least three times a day. <laughs> Prescribe your three wank. <laughs> Take with food. 
<laughs> and yeah, and after orgasm, you can feel kind of sleepy and you can feel happy. Um, and so a lot of people use orgasms to sleep. <laughs> use orgasms to sleep. Um, they'll they'll knock one out to, to get themselves nice and good for sleeping. In fact, I knew I had a friend in high school who he doesn't listen to this. It's fine. Um, he would he would do it uh, twice a day. I think oh, he'd do it when he woke up oh. um, to get him ready for the day. And then uh, <laughs> to wake up and to go to sleep. Yeah, and to go to sleep. Weird. He had a routine, man. Like it was like that, like clockwork. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to contact him in the morning, you couldn't do it. No. Between the hours of like sort of you know, um, and it's weird because his mum was in the house as well. But between like you know, from the minute that he woke up to when he got up to you know go for breakfast, couldn't contact him. No, it wasn't worth it. Um, Most people just have a morning coffee. No. 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 <laughs> Not this guy. He has a morning jerk coffee. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't laugh. So, um, yeah. So, um, basically, once you orgasm, it basically tells your body to start um, calming you down, which can get you ready to uh, go to sleep or just feel, you know, all good and uh, good mm. and happy. Um, but what are orgasms for? Well, to make you do it again, I assume. <laughs> I don't think orgasms are for anything. They're just a, there. A, they have to have a, a purpose. A good part of uh, the, the baby making process. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Is, that, is that what the, the answer that was, was? Is that what they're for? Having children. I mean, what does it mean to be for something? That's a bit controversial, that one as well, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it, yeah. What are orgasms for? <laughs> That's what I'd like to what let that come for? to its natural <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, well, yeah, orgasms generally are thought. I mean, for uh, males are pretty much essential. Like they're for squeezing out all of that baby juice, you know, mm. um, and th that's what they're for. Um, but generally, uh, like, yeah, it, if if you make something feel good, animals want to do it, and we're animals. You know, we can't get out. We can't get out of that. We are animals, and um, most animals that have penetrative sex, uh, it, it's good for it to feel. It's good for it to feel good because it's an incentive, basically. If you think about it, everything is incentivized pretty much that an animal needs to do, right? You know? Yeah. If you think, well, so you know how like when dogs are in heat or when dogs are just like around and they meet other dogs and mm -hmm. they just start, start having sex. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's motivated by, oh, this is going to feel good or like, oh, I feel like I should do this because offspring. Maybe both. Maybe both. I mean, maybe animal, this is the thing. I, I, I asked this on Twitter the other day, just completely, like completely out of the blue. Um, whether animals knew what sex does, like, cause like, yeah. do animals, mm. do they know what's causing it? Do they know what's causing it? But it's so weird because even like, obviously in rat groups, but there's, there's a bunch of posts about how, like when the rat gets pregnant, like she makes a nest, like she knows she's going to have kids. So like, there must be some like feeling of like, oh, I know the consequences of this. Like, there must the be. You, you made something. your choices. Yeah. You knew what was going to happen, little Miss Rat. You yeah. have to take care of the babies yeah. or eat them if they're too much. Oh dear. God. I mean, does that not, I mean, I don't know the answer to this, but does that not assume that, um, so like when you're, <laughs> might it be that the dog or the whatever you just said, or the owl or whatever the bird the was. Rat. Did I say um, owl? I said, I said rat. Wait, wait, did you say rat? Okay, sorry. <laughs> the owl. I was, <laughs> I was thinking of owls, man. I don't know. Um, like, what I mean is, is that like, we as humans um, make sort of decisions and and we then think about our decisions and, and anticipate other decisions that we might make, um, whereas animals might just, might just do things yeah. and not ever actually make future decisions that the things just happen and the decisions are a, a manifestation of the brain coming to those decisions based on whatever is running the animal but they might not anticipate oh this is going to feel good they just find themselves doing it and they never realized they're just constantly doing would there be a way to know mm, you can't I mean, exactly ask. i don't know I, I feel like animals do go for things that feel good because obviously we've done a lot of studies on i mean rats for example um, and rats will, rats will go to do things that feel good. Like oh, they'll, they'll take drugs. Oh, I, know, I agree with you. I agree with you that <laughs> the behavior is rats will go and do things that feel good. As in the, the, the organism rat will move towards things that make it feel good. But what I mean is that the, what the way you were talking about it, is this it's sort of a, a self-referential consciousness. Yeah. yeah. Like, like that there's a, that there is a, a an individual's 
um, self that is making the decision and anticipating a possible future. Um, whereas, I mean, that, I'm not saying that animals don't have that. I, we don't know. We can't ever know because that's a subjective thing. Yeah. But they well, might just be constantly in what is happening right now. And, and the motivation towards good feelings happens subconsciously. But then you wouldn't that's be fair. able to train a dog, would you? Ah. Why not? Because you're training the system that makes no, those but decisions. If you think, but if, well, what I'm saying, is, when I say do animals know what's causing it, like, okay, if you, if a dog barks and you hit the dog, sorry. Don't do it. Don't do that. Content but if a dog running. barks and you hit the dog, the dog will at some point learn, oh, bark means hit. Don't want to bark because then hit. It understands the cause and effect. Of... I I don't I don't necessarily agree. I think that if you hit, if the dog barks and you hit it, it it might just downregulate the behavior of barking, so that the in every individual moment to moment, the possibility of barking happening is lower. It but might then, not. But then, if you go, think about barking you, and then, but then how can you bring that up to more com complex training of animals when it's you know what I mean? Like to, to no, some extent. Well, I mean, okay, right. So you can train a dog to do like an incredibly sort of um, complex routine. You can train rats to do um, quite complex tasks. Um, so to some extent. Yeah, you can also train a computer to do complex tasks. It doesn't mean it has subjective consciousness that anticipates things. But the, the, my point is that, my point is that um, it, like they, to some extent, we know that animals can understand. Um, is that something will happen, or at least some animals can understand that something will happen if a certain action is taken to an extent. Do you know what I mean? In that, like, I agree that the 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 brain can compute possible futures. I agree with you completely so, there. So the, the only thing, the only thing that the only the only way to bring that to what I'm talking about is that instead of the action being um, a barking and a slap, the action mm -hmm. is sex and a baby. You know what I mean? Like, do animals? Do animals? Like. Like the thing is, at what point do things understand that if they have sex, like then a baby is going to happen, you know? Or I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I'm not asking. You I to think know. we should test it. We should ask them. But pretty much every mammal that we studied has sex, like has had homosexual sex. So that does point to there being sex for pleasure in many uh, animals. And interesting. Yeah. So and then uh, so the, it kind of leads you to the idea that um, orgasm or sex feeling good is sort of the an incentive for animals to have sex in the same way that like if you eat something that's high in sugar you'll be like oh that feels good yummy um you know if you have a piece of fruit you'll be like oh boy feeling great have a I'll nice cold glass of water you're like oh Ooh. i better keep on drinking this stuff <laughs> but if you burn your hand in a fire you're like no 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 not for me, <laughs> not for me thank you no, no more of this <laughs> Stuff that feels good, you want to do again, and stuff that feels bad, yeah. you generally don't. Um, so yeah, um, and all female mammals have a, a clitoris, uh, which re which it's the the function of that organ is just to react to stimulation from sex. Um, and yeah, the the thing is that orgasm and sexual pleasure aren't exactly the same thing. Orgasm is that sort of peak of like, boom, yeah. you hit it. It, it's, it could be a subjective thing as well. It's hard to understand whether animals are having it. Um, but like, I think most monkeys, we, we think that a lot of monkeys um, and chimps and whatnot have orgasms. Um, and the thing is that, again, you need, you need to remember that just because um, orgasms are kind of there for, well, one, for ejaculation in males, um, and two, for like sex feeling good as an incentive, uh, that's not the only reason that animals have sex. You've got um, like I said, homosexual sex existing in lots of different animals, mm -hmm. um, pretty much everyone that we've looked into it. Um, so sex for pleasure is a thing. So like there's bonobos, which are like some of our, I think most closely related um, sort of cousins, I guess. They have lots of sex for pleasure. <laughs> lots I of thought it. you meant the bonobos having sex with cousins for some reason. They probably <laughs> are. I mean, that's... Yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's likely. I mean, it is Both. incredibly <laughs> likely. I don't know about much about bonobo family structure, but I don't think they're you know, too, too too harsh on incest. I don't think they have many concepts of cousins. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the way that, the, I mean, the way that, Bino like they do it for sort of social bonding as well. Yeah, I was um, going to say, it's surely not just pleasure. Like some well, of them do it to get closer. So yeah, I mean, but then pleasure and social bonding, like there's kind of a, there's kind of a, an odd line there, isn't there? Because social bonding and pleasure are kind of like very closely related. Like some things for social bonding, it, 
it, it's experiencing the pleasure together mm -hmm. or giving another pleasure or whatever. Uh, so that's that's that. Um, yeah, that's kind of what orgasms are for. Oh, and by the way, when we look for orgasms in other animals, we obviously we look at heart rate and stuff, but also I think they've looked at the faces that they make. They've tried to like- <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, they, really? I mean, they've done that, a little bit of that. But there's lots of other ways to do it. And they, we have tried lots of different ways, but it's very, <laughs> it's like obviously difficult to understand that sort of subjective experience. Just a bunch of scientists, scientists going, that was so like weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think we have this, we have this, um, this is really funny to me, right? In that um, we have this view right now that sex is for reproduction. And a lot of people um, will say, that it's unnatural to have sex for any other reason. So like, for example, people that say no sex until marriage because sex is for reproduction um, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't have sex with someone that you don't want. That's not true. Not, that's not even, <laughs> a, like, like sex being not for reproduction is incredibly natural. Look at literally any bloody mammal. Like, <laughs> Who made that rule? The Bible? Is that just like a religion? That is just a religion thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is that it's, yeah, it's it's probably it's probably a religious thing. I mean, I guess it makes sense in terms of like back in the olden days, if you didn't have, you know, when I'm I'm not even going to start talking. Well, no, I, mean... I had a thought, <laughs> but I couldn't be asked. Yeah, when you didn't have contraception. No, no, no. I was I was thinking more like you'd need um, stability if you're mm. thinking of having a kid, and if you thought like, oh, oh I got what you mean without contraception. Yeah, yeah you'd be having so, a kid. So yeah, yeah, like one of the ways of thinking about these things is like all these old um, ideas around sex are actually just ways of trying to get people to have less sex because it's not good to have loads of kids that don't have stable families. Yeah. Well, um, that's and then we come into this world where we have contraception and, and, it, and it's like, okay, that all looks really bad now, but that was a different world when we didn't have contraception. Yeah. Well, you say that, but then there's also the, there's also the sort of, like you can get it from anal or oral or anything, like anything oh, that doesn't But they involve... were prudes, Corey. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, that, I mean, that doesn't really explain that. Put a what in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> what? What um, the bum is gay? I, don't, I just mean that's an interpretation you could make. No, yeah, um, yeah. I don't absolutely. know if that's actually the case. I don't know. That no, I mean, sense. I think that for some of those religious sort of um, ideals, there were, in in some in some cases, there could have been valid reasons for them. For example, um, I think that, um, I think the sort of circumcision thing, uh, that made sense um, as a cleanliness thing. Because they didn't have soap. Really? Yeah, cause they, well, because they weren't washing them themselves properly, yeah. were they? Yeah. And why did evolution not take care of that then? Oh, because I mean, because it's not naturally living. Actual evolution valid takes a long thing. time, doesn't it? And like, you are slightly less likely to get infections and stuff. I think if you right. like, okay, so compare if not washing, not washing properly, um, you're more likely to get infections um, if you're uncircumcised than if you're um, not. As in, it's easier to wash. It's easier to wash penis if it's circumcised. Right, that's really interesting. So if you're not I washing it properly, there was an actual justification. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Well, no, no, no. It's no, only no, no, if no, no, you no, no, never on, clean no, it. No, a no. lot of people fall back on <laughs> the now. like, oh, uh, if you uh, if you have <laughs> a foreskin, it's dirty. It's like no, that's the, you, you're not yeah. gonna just no, wash it. Just wash it. Really. Not now. I mean, like no, no, way back now, when. Yeah, just to be totally clear, things like that take a while to die. Um, and there was there was a real a real like benefit to it. I didn't know that. That's all I mean. I didn't know there was any benefit I other than I think it was also God told to do with to off the end of our knobs. pleasure being immoral and that being like the most sensitive yeah. part of the penis. There's probably a bunch of it's a, yeah. There's plenty. Of, there's bound to be plenty of reasons. I mean, yeah. one there was a sort of cleanliness thing that it, like if you were not washing yourself properly, it can decrease the chance of infections. Obviously, nowadays, have a bloody shower, mate. Have a bloody shower. <laughs> have a bloody Arse shower, out, right? Mate. That that solves your problem. You don't need to go do no cutting. It's fine. No. Um, Even just a wet wipe. Yeah, like, I just feel like it's the, so easy. The power of a wet wipe, my friend, <laughs> unscented. You know, you don't want to get anything too too irritating up in there. I don't want any flowery stuff in my penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, put, and then also the down, the on on top of that, um, the scissors down. It does decrease. It it can decrease pleasure a lot. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So uh, there's well, there can be many reasons. It's yeah. Not can. <laughs> yeah. <it's okay. laughs> you jump off the most sensitive part. Right. Okay. So uh, if you're lucky, they leave the tendons. <laughs> What I'm saying is that there, uh, there historically there probably were reasons for like religious, uh, relig there were sort of some potential justifications for things, uh, religious things. Yeah. Although um, the like human social structure has changed a lot. There have been many different ones, and so the, the it, my point here is that you need to remember that just because what you just because what you're told is happening now is like the default mm -hmm. or the most correct, that's not true. And like even stuff like capitalism is very young. 
right? Mm -hmm. Very young. But right now we're in a position where we think that it's kind of been around forever and it's the only logical thing. It's been around since we were born. Yeah, because it's been around since we were born. (laughs) That's what it feels like. My point is that like, um, to bring it back, is that the idea that sex sex is only for reproduction is is not a terribly like ancient one mm-hmm. like people were having sex like people had sex for different reasons like you know throughout human history um and just a church coming in and saying no sex because god sad <laughs> doesn't mean that it's <laughs> the man in the sky cries <laughs> every single every single time you wank little baby jesus he cries <laughs> little tears <laughs> oh yeah yeah so um Sex isn't just for for reproduction. You could also do it just for fun. It's also for pissing off God. <laughs> cool, especially if it's gay sex. That really winds him up. Ah, uh, double points. Yeah, I mean his fault, man. <laughs> shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have built them like that if you didn't want him to do it. Shouldn't, don't put a G spot up the ass. Yeah. <laughs> How do Christians explain that? Like super homophobic. It is the one. work of Satan temptation? Ah, <laughs> the apple. <laughs> the apple. The apple Traveled of my down. ass. The apple tra- <laughs> Not only did a bit of apple get lodged in Adam's throat, it also, as it was passing out, got lodged in his anus, <laughs> creating the G spot. Oh dear. <laughs> well, this. I know it's not his anus. It's probably more rectum than anus. Whatever. Um, so why don't we talk about um, some weird and fun orgasm facts? Um, yeah. How I many orgasms are had per year? <laughs> I mean, in this household, probably not that many, mm. but um, in across the world, at least a million, at least a lot more I'd, than a I'd million. That, yeah, like, that's why I said at least a million. That's definitely like a day. You could go a lot <laughs> higher than that. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, we could sit and work out how many orgasms are had per year, or we can move on to my first fact, which is uh, from the Guinness Book of World Records. This was recorded apparently in 1500. <sighs> the longest orgasm um, in mammals is that of the domestic pig. Um, Sus scrofa domesticus. On average, its orgasm lasts 30 minutes, but it can last for as long as 90 minutes. I knew this. I heard about wow. this. Yeah. Oh, to be a pig. Although I have read things, um, and this is like oh, not dear. fully substantiated. I have heard things um, about, uh, uh, I think, uh, cis women potentially being able to make their orgasms last like over an hour. What the fuck? I, I, was, well, I was reading up about orgasms. And the thing is, when you start to read about orgasms, it's very difficult to find things that aren't from like cosmopolitan. Ooh, look at how you can have <laughs> ladies. Here's how to make make orgasm. Oh, um, it's really hard to find things that aren't like that. So I was reading through some of those and apparently, apparently you can orgasm for up to an hour or more. You wouldn't really mm. want to though, would you? It'd Be start hurting. Yeah. It takes up a lot of time. You need a good nap. No, 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 no. No, as in like you feel the you feel the feeling for an hour. As in like the feeling. You're not just of like, like ah! spasming in your bum one times a second for an hour. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's not like that would be awful. Yes, I I watched the 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 woman who was orgasming like for twenty days straight or something. She went on some news program and she was like, "It sounds really nice, but I really hate it." Oh, so there's, that's that's I think that's I can't remember the name of the condition, but there is a condition wherein you orgasm. Um, you can orgasm up to like 200 times a day um, and it can be embarrassing. It can be um, uncomfortable and obviously it can happen at inopportune times. So while it feels good, obviously it doesn't necessarily... 200 times a day, that's all the time. Well, it doesn't matter. It depends how long they are, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you. I can get I can get 200. <laughs> no. Yeah, cut, Champ, you, you blink more hour. than 200 times a day. It doesn't mean you spend <laughs> the entire day with your eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, apparently people can also <laughs> humans can experience orgasms like for basically their entire lives, which is really weird. You know, you, uh, as in when they get old, they can still orgasm. Well, yeah, but also when <laughs> like Not from infancy in... to oh. old mm. age, it's oh, weird, no, right? I didn't want to know that. Yeah, That's, this is no. something. This is literally one of the first things that it says when on Britannica. Um, so usually, um, you release around one to two tablespoons of semen when you orgasm. <laughs> Not everyone, mind, just if that's your, you know, persuasion. Um <laughs> Noah's measuring it, right? <laughs> One to two tablespoons. Look, here's the thing. Next time you next time you're doing it, okay. pop pop a pop a little yeah. um <laughs> pop, a, pop something out. Grab a tablespoon. Yeah, yeah, say, well, grab a, a tablespoon or two. Um and just yeah. uh just see. Oh tablespoon. I thought you said teaspoon. No. And I was tablespoon. like, no, t- t- that's no. No a tablespoon. Teaspoon. 
Oh, no, tablespoon. Uh, go to the doctor. Although tablespoon, that's even two tablespoons doesn't seem like very much, you know? <laughs> I'm Corey. I come lots. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much inside of me. No, I just mean I feel like... I need like... a cup. <laughs> <laughs> a beaker. A be <laughs> you'd be so dehydrated. Uh, like so... What? Yeah. If it was a cup. If it was a cup of semen every single time. How much water is in semen? It's a quarter a of a liter. A quarter that's, of a liter of gum. That's a lot. That's a lot of water to like be going, you know? Imagine your friend who did it twice a day. <laughs> oh man, he'd be like... <laughs> he did it before he went to bed and after he woke up. He would have to like get up in the night to drink. He'd be on a drip. <laughs> Just take a big swig before, you know? Take a big swig before, Corey says, right before taking a big swig. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to re 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 replenish, my replenish cup. all of your cup. <laughs> I, do, do you for today's up, do you episode, cup? Is that to it? make it interactive, <laughs> for today's episode, to make it interactive, I did bring oh, just a, a lot of cum. And yes, it took a lot out of me. Right. And so I need to replenish my Roll. fluids. Let's all take a sip. How many cups? <laughs> Luke, you don't need to know how many cups, but check your front door right now. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Look under your seat. There'll be a lorry pulling up. You all do the homework. <laughs> so There'll be a lorry outside. <laughs> um, um, it's also possible um, for there, there's, there's something called like a, a female ejaculate, which is like there's, mm -hmm. there's like there's kind of two different fluids. <laughs> one of them is more urine, and the other one oh. is has got something um, <laughs> squirt. <laughs> Turn off. <laughs> Wait, wait, more wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? Is squirting the urine one? No, it's squirting is both. It's got urine what in is, it. Well, okay, so it comes oh. from the urethra. One of them is one of them is chemically quite similar to is chemically pretty much the same as urine. Another one has got like what? um oh. No oh, it, <laughs> Yuck, actually. Describing something as a urine is no. not sexy. <laughs> Urine isn't urine isn't bad. It's just water in urea. Yeah, but it's just the fact that people are like, oh yeah, I made a squirt, and I'm like, you made a pee on you. Pee is that's not, what you no, did. No, because there's also there's also um, <laughs> there's also something else in there as well, which is oh yeah, so pee and something else. Well, so that yeah, makes PSA, it an ugly word. PSA. It's it's like a it's like a <laughs> PSA. It's like a prostate. Like it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> the, the town crier is here. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> it's not just urine. <laughs> hear pee, hear pee. No, um, I don't think you understand that it doesn't matter what you put on top of urine. There's still urine in it. Okay, but what if you were to take out all the urea? Then it's just water. Right? Yeah, well, that's but not it, what it you're saying. So, but what's the big yeah. deal, man? It's just it's pee. Just some pee. The big deal is it's pee. I've seen that. <coughs> There's a South Park episode you and I need to watch about pee, and it will really change your mind. I've seen it. The one where they get like there's like a flood of pee. Dying. Yeah, yeah. The one where there's like a flood of pee. Why would that change my mind? Because it's, it's that, just... I, that would make me more stubborn. Okay, right. Moving on from the pee. So yeah, um, squirting. Uh, that's there's so there's, a, <laughs> there's, a tr there's a true female ejaculate, and then the other one that is more or less is more pee like. Um, <laughs> And can I ask a question about this? Yeah, because I am I am genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. um, what is there any is there any benefit to this? Is there a <laughs> theory as to why it happens? Um, what's going on there? So this is uh, this is a, a quote from um, this is a quote from <laughs> this is a quote from a scientist uh, Barry Komisarek who said. <clears throat> Whether either of these fluids plays a physiological role, that is, whether they serve any adaptive function, is not known. <laughs> nah, no idea, mate. Yeah, ejaculation from a vulva is less common than ejaculation from a penis. Um, and some people do it and some people don't. Um, yeah. From the vulva? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. From the vulva? From the vulva. But the vulva's mm. like the, the doors. Isn't, isn't it? Like... <laughs> That's the labia. <laughs> the, oh yeah, the sorry. Doors. sorry. The vulva is sorry. the vulva just like the general area? Is that or is that a specific? Oh no, I don't want to. We're really bad. I don't want to go into the. Okay, just cut. Of snip, okay. snip. No, Doesn't no, matter. The anatomy doors. of that is the doors. <laughs> Let me in, please. <laughs> yeah, so hall. I've already mentioned this, but again, I just want to point out that <laughs> usually we think that uh, orgasm. Um, Orgasm uh, is like sort of dependent on like you know sex, but people can orgasm without sex. Usually, it's mm. masturbation. Yeah. What? No. No. Without, like, <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we've spoken a little bit about um uh you know the 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 male and female orgasm um is they're kind of referred to in literature, and this is the thing when you look for orgasm when you search orgasm 
there are so many results that say, why do ladies have orgasms? They don't need... The, the, the females don't need orgasms. Why are they doing that? They don't have to deposit anything. <laughs> uh-huh. No, they don't. No. Except for in a bank. Um, oh, a, and a baby. Does it, does, it, does it actually... Well, in terms of when you're having sex and trying for a baby, does a female orgasm help aid the sperm? Does it kind of mm. like the, the, the spasm, like, like suck it up a bit? Um, so, I so love there, this. Well, it must. <laughs> it must. So there have been some studies, um, but n- no. I mean, it's kind of it's it's kind of inconclusive. We don't really think that uh. we don't have like solid solid evidence to say that the female orgasm um, increases fecundity or increases your uh, chances to conceive. Yeah. Um, don't laugh at me for using a word. <laughs> fecundity. It's with an F. Fecundity. Um, so. Yeah, so there's lots of questions about why cis women have orgasms. So let, let's talk about that. Um, yeah, so only 8% of women, um, apparently, have um, orgasms through uh, penal, uh, penis and vagina sex. <laughs> penetration. <laughs> yeah. Penal vagina. No, because penetration could be <laughs> anal. Oh, uh, yeah. True. Or dildos. Yeah. Or oral. Any kind of... Look, we mm. all know what penetration is. It does penetrate yeah, a number of places. Google it. Any hole is a goal. As they say. Oh dear. Um, oh no. Have your ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're wearing headphones. So, Corey's on the loose. <laughs> you could not handle, okay? Right? Look at your door because it's there. Um, I'm about to beat your eardrum. So, only 8% of um, cis women, according to a survey which you find below, um, reliably have orgasms uh, from penis and vagina sex. Um, that's unassisted. So that's without anything else. So just stick in the dick. Mm. Uh, only only 8% of cis women have reported being able to orgasm. Mm. And this is specifically cis women as well, because for uh, trans people, the rates of orgasm tend to be lower. Presumably sad. because... Oh. Sad. Sad. <laughs> like a Donald sad. Trump tweet. Sad. Sad. <laughs> oh, let's whip out Bad. the violin. That's definitely the worst thing that's happening to trans people. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, presumably because uh, orgasms can be uh, sort of Mentally. inhibited. Yeah, inhibited by um, many different things, including not feeling very good. <laughs> it's a bit hard to get off when you're like, oh, I got tits. That's not what I was expecting unless you to say. Look, unless you're a straight guy and you're like, oh, I got tits. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Someone else's mind, not. Yes. For anyone listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so male and female orgasms are, are, can be different in different ways. Uh, you guys, I presume, already are somewhat aware of this. Uh, but um, the male orgasm, as I've said already, is shorter. Um, it tends to be pretty quick, yeah. over and done with. Yeah. Um, the female orgasm is longer and can be more easily interrupted. Presumably, like for one reason, because it is longer. Not like actually interrupted, as in you know you can stop it. It can be ruined. It can be oh, really? spoiled. Yeah. Whereas, like you know, usually with a male, once you once it's going, oh boy, <laughs> he, he, there's no stopping it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and we've already gone over how they're quite similar. Um, it, in fact, it, it's the, the same sort of muscles are contracting and whatnot. So it, they are, you know, fairly similar. Um, but the, and another difference is obviously that um, the female orgasm can you can sort of have multiple orgasms, which is basically um, with successive. I don't want to say this. I'm so glad I never went into sex education. <laughs> with successive sort of stimulation, you can then have more orgasms in the same period. Whereas with males, yeah. it's like you know you, you you got one and you got to wait a bit. Usually, yeah, you know, usually it could be differences. You're done. Yeah, you're That's one it. and done, and you wait for a little you bit. Have to recharge and you go again. Mm. Yeah. So, um, there is a, like I said, you know, when you search, uh, when you search online, there are many questions of li- li- quite literally, uh, if you search orgasm right now in Google, the first things that will come up are headlines saying, why do women orgasm or Stop. why is there a female orgasm? Really? Yeah. No, they like, literally try it right now. Orgasm. Orgasm facts, female orgasms, everything you need to know. What can cause orgasm problems in women? What is an orgasm? Orgasm dysfunction in women. Yeah. I can't see this specific thing. The orgasm gap. 
we need to readdress the balance. <laughs> there is an orgasm gap. Why um, do women get so much more orgasm? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. And this is the thing. Um, There's a lot about female orgasms. Yeah. yeah. They're obsessed. So, no, but here's the thing, right? And, and immediately you're like, oh, sexism, which, okay, yeah, to, to a pretty great extent. Yeah. But um, also, Luke, why don't you try this for me? Google nipples. Just the word nipples. Okay. Nipples. <laughs> there we go. Uh, why everyone wants a new set of breasts with enhanced nipples. Yes, really. From the Telegraph. Harry Styles has four nipples and there's a scientific reason why. Hell yes. Jeez. This is so exciting. Uh, so do you want me to, what do you want me you to do? Google say, image? I mean, you should be, no, no I don't, why, I don't want you to look at nipples. Well, what, what, why do men have nipples? Yeah. I, yeah. I was gonna 25 <laughs> things you need to know about nipples. Okay, okay hold on. Wait. So you should, look, you should be seeing things about male nipples. Questions about why me, there are male nipples. No, actually the first one is about memory glands. Really? And there's nothing yeah. there it's about probably, male nipples. It's probably, is that not catered to your Google searches? No, I'm actually not signed in, to ah. be fair. Oh, um, is it more to do with like predictive? So it actually it was catered to Corey's Google search when he was researching. It's probably because I Googled. Googling why do women have nip, uh, no, nipples? No, I Googled male nipples first. Ah. Yeah. Nipple discharge. There's a lot about nipple discharge So that discharge makes sense. Okay, so I was confused because I was like, okay, so what, when I did this, what happened was I had searched orgasm for, you know, and I was signed out actually, so I got a lot of female stuff. Um, and then I searched, I was like, okay, let's try nipples. Uh, well, I searched male nipples first. And I was like, okay, let's just try nipples. Mm -hmm. And then I got a lot of stuff for male nipples. So presumably Google's just like, mm. you clearly want to know about male nipples. But yeah, no. Um, <laughs> males have nipples when they're like not necessary for, you know, the function that nipples are kind of generally for. Mm. Um, and that's quite, it's quite similar to orgasms um, with females in that there's, not a specific like straightforward function um and yet it seems that people talk more about the female orgasm than people talk about male nipples <laughs> i want to just clip out get rid of the bit where he said where people talk about and then just have a clip of cory going what? Oh, nipples. <laughs> let's leave that in uh where people so there's yeah people seem to talk more about female orgasm than people talk about male nipples but um yeah, it's really odd because when you look this up, it's basically people being like, but why? Why is it? Why is it? So I'll, I'll run you through some theories. So there's um, one, some people think that it can increase uh, fertility. Um, and what? so some people think that it can increase fertility as in um, when you when you have or increased chances of conception. Rather. Having nipples. Like what you said, no, no, no. Uh, Sorry, the female <laughs> orgasm. We're off of nipples now. Oh, I was <laughs> really nipples. confused. Forget the nipples. It's like, how does that work? <laughs> Just forget the nipples. All okay. Right. Male nipples increase female fertility. Yes. No, nope. and science can't explain <laughs> it. Some people think that, um, some people think that uh, similar to, with nipples, we're back onto nipples again, similar to nipples, uh, because uh, males and females have basically this, uh, there's the sort of um, pre-male and female like form of the sort of, fetus essentially or you know before you differentiated into being male or female there's this pre-stage so we all come from the same sort of place essentially right mm -hmm. yeah. so there are a lot of structures that are present there um there's a lot of structures that are present in both sexes that um are just kind of there because they've got the same roots essentially mm -hmm. so when you're saying um when you're saying so let me so, just clarify when you're saying um the there's, we don't know why necessarily the what, reason why females would have an orgasm. When you're talking about the orgasm, you're meaning specific. Do you mean specifically the um, the part where muscles sort of contract and spasm, not the evolutionary advantage to having a pleasurable response to having sex? Well, both, kind of, but generally it's more focused on specifically the orgasm with the contraction and the, the good feeling. Yeah, because unless that helps fertility, that doesn't make sense. Why? Females would need well, to have that. No, that's not. Well, you're you're they very just have you're thinking fun. very close-minded there, Luke. No, no, no. So, so no. I mean, I mean specifically the spasms of the muscles. No, no. I, I know um, what you mean. I, yeah. Okay, I, okay. Yeah. Worry. Like, or, or, or at least there isn't an obvious thing that I can think of right now no. why yeah. that would be beneficial for a female to have. But the pleasure side of it, of course, yes, absolutely, that makes sense. Yeah. So there's the idea. There's the thought that uh, sort of because we've come from the same sort of root that it's just like, oh yeah, uh, they both come from the same place. And it's almost vestigial to an extent, a vestigial sort of like function um, mm. or a function that is like, doesn't, it's not necessary, but it's just present because it's present in males. Um, and that makes sense to some extent in that sort of, you've got all the pathways laid down, like, you know, you've got all the sort of nerves there. It makes sense that it would feel, that it'd feel good for both because mm -hmm. it's kind of inbuilt already. But that doesn't really um, hold up because evolutionarily speaking, that would have, 
it takes a lot it costs a lot of energy to do that you know and that would have if it had no purpose or benefit whatsoever we'd expect to see that sort of down regulated mm -hmm. to uh, non-existence and also the male and female orgasm as we've already spoken about are kind of different in their in you know their ex the experience of them so there's also nothing there's also nothing in the sort of structure the anatomy that is um that is sort of diminished and you'd expect to see that as well so it's it's in, it's it's odd we we don't have any sort of specific I we didn't we wouldn't have any specific idea of like why there is a female orgasm although I would kind of I feel like when we look for why we're we're often very small minded about it do you know what I mean we're always like especially when it comes to especially when it comes to like a female male thing it's kind of it's kind of like oh yes people if you're male you're probably a man therefore of course you have everything because it's <laughs> the world is made for you. And then there's always questioning about why like female specific things happen, you know? Yeah. Could it make sense that um the necessity for a uh, f female org orgasm, especially like this this one big exciting moment mm -hmm. as opposed to just the the act continuously feeling good, is because it's quite important that that you carry on until for like a good amount of time. Yeah. Mm. Because if if it didn't just get better, if there wasn't some end goal, then the female might just get like be like, well, I'm done now, and you haven't come, so I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Well, this is the, like <laughs> there's plenty of reasons. So it's like, um, well, one thing is that uh, like things like rabbits can only uh, only start ovulating when they have sex or when they reach sort of that point, and so the idea that it could be an evolutionary evolutionary holdover from that, even though like, um, like you know human ovulation isn't dependent on sex um it could be just a holdover from like things like mm. where rabbits have come from um but that is not that is not the only thing um there there is the sort of thing that oh yeah it could be to like you know make sure that people go all the way it could be um so that uh females could be more discerning of their partners in terms of like uh oh if you sort of if you get me there then um there is like, like lionesses. Yeah. Yeah. Lionesses are so powerful. They're just like, nope, you're going to have to wait. Yeah. You have to wait. <laughs> uh, no, you do some good things. Maybe, maybe <laughs> one day, man, one day. And then, um, <laughs> and then there is, there is this other theory as well that it, it could just be for pleasure. It could be for, uh, it could be for a bonding thing. So apparently because of the way that human societies were set up, um, like quite a while ago, it, it's, um, it, you know, uh, they're, there could have been a benefit of like the bonding aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So while it doesn't necessarily help for reproduction, it does help to bring um, basically mates closer together, which could help keep them sort of, you know, long-term partners. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I mean, I, this is just something I briefly want to touch on. Apparently, uh, so according to a survey in 1999, 43% of women in the U S um, have some sort of problem with their sex lives. And that's from the Journal of American Medical Association. Um, so yeah, a, 99, a 99, 1999 survey, 43% uh, of women apparently have um, issues with uh, orgasming. So, and actually, um, FSD, female sexual dysfunction, um, is very, very common um, to the point where it's, it, is it really dysfunction if it's, if, if it's, it's becoming affecting... Like really sure. common yeah if it's a, if it's something that affects most people is it is it or not most people if it's something that affects like you know let's say 40 percent of people mm -hmm. is it really dysfunction or is it just function is it just how things a are a different function yeah so there's it, it's interesting because the view of female sexuality by society really really colors how we study this mm. um and i think it's just what is interesting to think that that's one of the ways that sort of sexism affects science another thing is just the uh faking orgasm so really briefly apparently um this is um f this is from another survey that uh, uh this is taking directly their words 60 percent, 7 percent of women have reported faking an orgasm whereas 28 percent of men have 67 i feel like that's a bit low surely. right it feels low <laughs> <laughs> it feels low. Yeah, i was like that's a lot yeah. but 100 percent <laughs> but that's not that's not split down through sexuality so it's presumably they're mostly heterosexual ah. but if we if we if we go here to i find one that's specifically about the ligbits the lgbt's uh, well, really, it's just the LGBTs. Um, this this study doesn't actually look at the uh, at the T and LGBT. Um, 
But it's yeah. So it looks uh, it looks at uh, gay men, lesbians, bisexual people, uh, and heterosexual men and women. They have more so, orgasms, right? Huh? They, they have more orgasms, right? They're yeah. better at getting their partner to it. Who do? Oh, gays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were very. You, you were not being specific there. <laughs> I was confused. Yeah. So okay. So the sample size here um, is it's over fifty thousand people, oh, um, but twenty six. But 26,000 of them were uh, straight men, uh, 400 of them, 450 of them were gay men, 550 of them were bisexual men, 340 of them were lesbian women, um, and over 1,000 of them, 1,100 were bisexual women, um, and heterosexual women took up about 24,000 of mm. these people. Just for the numbers there for you. Um, and this was a basically a study asking them, how often do you or orgasm during uh, sex, essentially? Or when you're sort of being sexually intimate. So the highest, surprise, surprise, uh, was... Uh, no, was uh, heterosexual men at 95%. Ah. Gay men at 89%. Mm. Bisexual men at 88%. Lesbian women at 86%. Bisexual women at 66%. Oh, and then heterosexual no. women at 65%. Oh, <laughs> which is like, oh, as soon as you start having sex with straight men, <laughs> boom, it oh, plummets. No. Right, oh, that would suck. It sucks, but then heterosexual. So heterosexual men are likely having sex with heterosexual women. In fact, because they're the the greatest numbers of both of them, you'd expect that those are the people that they're yeah. mostly interacting yeah. with. And ninety five percent of heterosexual men are getting their rocks off, with only sixty five percent of heterosexual women. That's just like, mm. come on, lads, please. Come on, <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> try Finish harder. The job. But when you say, when you say that, <laughs> is that is the is the problem um where is the it, like you're saying is there a is there a um issue where women are finding that particularly difficult well like is that is that a physiological thing is it a societal thing or is it probably both well, yeah, okay. i think potentially because it could be more easily interrupted in in females but also the um just the, the there is very much a thing in our society of sex just being sticking it in and getting it done with and you know, that's not necessarily the best way for both people to achieve sure, orgasm. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So th I think that could be it. Uh, so for well, looking it seems at very effective for the straight men. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 19 out of 20. So it, if you look at this, um, it says essentially, they, they also asked, um, you know, they asked more questions. So women were more likely to orgasm if their last sexual encounter included deep kissing, manual genital Ooh. stimulation. Manual. Um, or, I've got an order. Oral sex <laughs> in addition to um, oh. PIV. You put some effort or just, into or it. Or just penetra penetrative sex. Much. Yeah. You know, d do more than just stick it in. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the fact that like only 8% of females can orgasm from just penetrative sex. And like a bunch of like heterosexual guys are just like, oh, this must feel great for her, right? Like, must, <laughs> must feel feeling great? exactly how I am. Yeah. And then they're faking it as well. So it's like, oh, did you come? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I did it. Yeah. It was yeah, so did. Great. yeah. Thank you. You did such a good job. Then they go away and they pull. <laughs> <laughs> they talk to all their girlfriends. They're like, "Yeah, he sucked." Uh, I have to I'm just myself gonna off. go have a bath and listen to some very loud music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so there's also, um, I mean, there's there's lots of studies done on this, but I think I think a big part of it is just a societal thing of like, n for a long time we didn't really think of sex as being something that was, should be pleasurable for like, you know 50 percent of the people having it. Um, <laughs> And so now when we're trying to, when like we're asking these questions, it's a lot of it seems to be, well, we're just not doing it right. You know? So there's that, but let's end with something maybe a little bit lighter. Why don't we talk about uh, death by orgasm or orgasms for health? Now I've heard about this. Yeah. You've heard about this. Uh, I've heard of one case of this. You've, it's probably the same ah. case. Give us a go. What, what case have you heard of? Oh, I can't remember specifics. It's just no? some guy, uh, maybe having a few too many self sessions. No, 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 this is a different thing. Okay, I've so heard of someone dying during orgasm because they got so excited they had a heart attack. It's kind oh. of nice. yeah. So this is this. So this was a. This is a, my title for this is cop dies from threesome. Um, <gasps> so this cop was with his friend, uh, and he was cheating on his wife with uh, this. So it was him, a, another guy, and a woman that wasn't his wife. They specified that in the article. Um, he was thirty-one years old. He was a police officer in Atlanta. Um, and the reason I know about this is because uh, the the wife sued uh, sued the doctor 
um, sued a doctor and won three million um, in the case. Now, the reason for this was that the man had a heart issue uh, that basically meant that strenuous exercise or strenuous activity could um, cause his heart to kind of give out. Sexercise. <laughs> yeah. No, actually. So the story is a, it's macabre. Obviously, it's very dark. But like, the, just the concept of someone dying whilst cheating on someone with a threesome. Hmm. It's. But yeah. So essentially, the doctor did, uh, the doctor um, uh, didn't treat him properly. Uh, for his high blood pressure and didn't diagnose him properly mm. and that he didn't tell him, hey, uh, you know, strenuous activity, don't be doing that. And this is a quote from the this is a quote from the lawyer. Um, the type of sex that he was engaged in is the type that's totally unacceptable to our community. <laughs> <laughs> but the <laughs> fact the fact of the matter is this man could have died running on the treadmill, running after a criminal. <laughs> but he didn't though. Running after <laughs> a he didn't criminal. He didn't though. A criminal <laughs> like himself. The adulterer. Yeah. I mean, that is not the point, though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know what? And this is the thing. Uh, the jury found that... This is so funny to me. Uh, I can't believe I read this. The jury found that the doctor was 60% responsible and the man himself what? was 40% percent responsible. How did they work out the percentages? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are 40% responsible for your own death because he had a threesome mm. without your wife. Um, so they wanted to mainly blame it on the doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the wife that meant that the wife, uh, the widow rather. Um, oh, poor girl. Well, she got three million, but that three oh. million had come down from five million. Rich girl. Because it was forty percent her, um, her dead husband. Stop. Fault. Yeah. So if if they decided that it was a hundred percent the doctor's fault, she would have got five million. You'd be extra pissed off. Your husband cheated on you, died, and then lowered the amount of money that you could have received. You're a millionaire, though. In death, took two million away from you. So yeah, the thing is that uh, that uh, yeah, she got she got uh, she became a millionaire from this. So her husband died, um, and she found well, her her husband was cheating on her, and he immediately died, and she got three million. I don't know if someone was going to mm. cheat on you. I feel like that's the the best outcome, probably. Well, it's justice, isn't it? <laughs> He said, that's the was that she got a lot of money. <laughs> so there's this, so sex could be very dangerous. It could, orgasming could cause you to die, but orgasming can apparently also be good for your health. So I found this study from 1997, which was, I think, quite funny. Um, they had about a thousand um, men from the age of 45 to 59 and studied them for 10 years. Oh. Um, and they essentially found that your risk of dying was 50% lower if you had a high frequency of orgasms in comparison to people having a low frequency of orgasms. Oh my god, Grandpa, I've got this, like, please. <laughs> please, Grandpa, have wank. Please, Granddad, please. <laughs> I need to make it till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting your, getting your Granddad porn. Just oh, to keep him alive. Oh my god. Granddad, uh, please take your medication. I was like, 12 or 13 the first time i ever heard about masturbation i was on a sick day from school and i was watching tv uh and there was some show on the tv probably channel four or something about like about this and it was saying that masturbation can apparently or maybe at least just having having some kind of orgasm can reduce the amount of colds that you get Ooh. is that correct like it boosts maybe it boosts the immune system i'm not sure how it would do it i don't know Honestly, I, I don't believe know. it. I haven't seen anything <laughs> saying that um, that having an orgasm frequently will make your immune system better. But evidently, yeah. like, well, from this, not evidently, there was only about a thousand people. But from this, apparently, they've they've concluded that uh, having sex can have a protective effect on men's health. That was their conclusion. Interesting. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was quite, <laughs> it's quite <laughs> just quite a silly study that I wanted to end on. That apparently. Uh, the, the thing is that we we study lots of things, and sometimes in science we just look at lots of men and see how much they jack it to see whether mm. that's going to kill them or not. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, and that is that is the story for this week. Thank you to our patrons for suggesting orgasms. But it yeah. is time for my favorite part of the show. <gasps> it's the quick fire quiz. <gasps> dun 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 dun. So you all know the rules of the quick fire quiz. I will ask you one single question. I've got to finish asking the question before you can buzz in with your answer. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer wins isn't that lovely yeah. yeah are you all ready yeah yeah what are your buzzers jamp what is your buzzer like squidge disgusting luke what is your buzzer ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, great <laughs> rebecca is sitting upstairs wondering what the hell is going on yeah uh, she just heard me like shouting uh, about cum uh, and making sex noises <laughs> noah what is your buzzer ah. very good yeah, buzzer bog standard good buzzer it. by the way you want it to be quick and he 
Ah. Ah. Right, okay. <laughs> Here is my oh, question no. for you. I was go really well together. On average, how long is a pig's orgasm? Ah. Ah. I think that Jamp got it. Oh, did I? Yeah. Uh, well, it's at the, the top end. The, the maximum is like 90 minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, like 60, 60 to 90 minutes. Ah. Oh, ah, that's no? incorrect, ah, my friend, ah, Jam. Ah, 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 Noah. Ah, 30 minutes. Ding, ding, ding. That is ah, right. Ah, well done. Oh, Fantastic. Well, Congratulations, Noah. It could go, it could go for 60. Yeah, but I said the average. average. If it's between 30 and 90. Yeah, but on, no, the average, on average. The average is 30, it, but no. it can go to <laughs> <laughs> You can't argue with that. I'm trying to well, get my way out. Congratulations, Noah. You won this week's quick fire quiz. <laughs> I think, is that your first? No. Okay. I won the first one I ever did as well. Oh, well, good to, good for you. Little round you of go. applause. Two points. That's it, over. <laughs> Catch up, please. <laughs> so what we do every month, every single time we do a patron vote episode, which is what this is, we like to thank all of our new patrons over at patreon.com forward slash sci guys. So shall we get to thanking? We shall, once I remember to bring up the list. Don't you worry. I'm letting you pick up the list and bring it up. Because first, we got, <laughs> we got to thank Roriro. Ooh, thank you, Rorira. Thank you to Alex Watson. Thank you, Quinn Dixon. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Susanna. <laughs> thank you to Monica Elmgren. Ooh, what a nice name. Thanks, Punk Fish. Thank you, Caitlin Kennedy Roxborough. Thank you to Not Maddie. Not Maddie 1. Not Maddie 2. You know what? N not Maddie th 3, 4, 5, f or, or 6. Thank you, Maddie 7. <laughs> Did you forget how many numbers were before 7? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bobby Stanner, who I hope is a massive stanner of this show. Thank you to Uneasy as a Book. Thank you to Hannah Ilkvist. I hope I said your name right. Well, thank you very much to all of those patrons and to every single other patron we have. Just a reminder that if you comment and like and share and subscribe to this episode, you can be entered into winning winning some lovely things that competition thing we're doing a little competition thing a lovely yeah. little competition yes yeah, so if you like this episode you subscribe and also you make a comment answering the question that we we had at the top of the episode then you'll be entered into the contest and mm. you can do this on last week's episode you can do it on next week's episodes and a few more episodes and we'll announce mm. them in our 105th episode so Ooh. keep an eye out for that <laughs> but before we go we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive. Oh, wait, hold on. I went to. to uh, how have you been, Noah? Do you enjoy the? Do you enjoy doing another episode of Sci Guys? Was it fun? Yeah, it was so fun. I learned so much. You got anything else you want to talk about? I have a song coming out on the seventeenth of March, but by the time this episode is out, it'll already have been there. So listen <gasps> to my new song. Wow, stupid on Spotify. It's very we're all, fun. We're listening to it already. We can. Yeah. It goes. I'm stupid. Very good. Yeah. You should also watch the video on YouTube, which was directed by someone very smart and very intelligent and very talented. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Luke, it was you, Luke. You did that. <gasps> it was me. Yes. Thank you. All of that will be linked in the description below. But before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producer, Ashley Muller. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and SciGuys on TikTok too. You can find me at NotCorey everywhere. You can follow me at Jampkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. I am Noah Fintz everywhere apart from on Twitter where I am Noah Fid Adams and TikTok where I am the Noah Fintz.